Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to this brand new show that I will try out on my channel. Basically, what I'm about to do is that I will watch a full-length movie and you will see my review of it. And some short glimpses from the movie to give you a full set of what the movie is all about. I've thought about doing this for a really long time and there is actually a show that inspired me to, to start and try this thing out. That show is called Welcome to the Basement. You should go check it out because it's a really good show with two really good guys that are making a bunch of good reviews of movies that they've never seen before. In their show, they watch a lot of different movies, but I will for now only focus on horror movies. Why horror movies? I mean, there's so many movies out there. Why just focus on a small genre? Well, the reason is simple. First of all, I rarely watched any horror movies when I grew up. And I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure I missed about 90% of, of the horror movies that's ever been made. And I kind of feel like I want to catch up on them. Uh, good or bad, I want to see them all and I want to give some, make a show out of it and give some kind of review on the movie that I've seen. Also, since it's a horror movie and I'm, I'm about to watch it alone, I kind of feel like you're watching it with me, even though you're not actually watching it live with me, you're still watching it with me afterwards. So it, I feel much safer. Schaefer? I feel much safer when you guys are around to give me hugs, uh, cookies, chocolate, and just, you know, being there for me. The second reason to why I want to watch horror movies is because this channel started out as a horror horror game channel, or a game, uh, a playthrough channel for horror games, and I feel like I kind of lost that along the way, and I kind of want to get back to the whole horror genre again. So the first movie that I have selected is... The Ring. The movie was released back in 2002 and was directed by Gore Verbinski. It stars the roles of Naomi Watts, Davy Chase and Martin Henderson. The movie that I'm about to watch is an American remake from a Japanese movie that was released back in uh, 1998, I think, and that movie was called Ringu. Ringu! I just want to add that uh, this is a movie I've never seen before, and I think the reason why is because I was 12 back when it was released, and I wasn't, I wasn't the bravest kid, I can tell you that. Do you guys remember the scene from Resident Evil where, where the zombie guy comes with the big axe and just drags it along the ground? That, that scene scared the bejesus out of me. I was 12 and I, I, I just, that, that scene just freaked me out so much. These movies were released during the same year, so I'm just saying, a zombie guy with an axe, a tiny girl in a TV that comes out to murder you? Yeah, no, I would have been like scarred for life. I would not have been sitting here. I would have been sitting in an asylum. You would have seen me in Outlast. Well, enough of me prattling on. Let's get this review started. But first, I must obviously remind you guys that uh, this uh, will obviously contain spoilers. So if you haven't seen the, the movie before, go and do that right now. Because then you can come back here and we can discuss the movie together in the comment section below to start a discussion of the... <laughs> the movie starts out with a quiet evening at home. Katie and Becca are watching TV, but that quickly gets boring. So Becca starts talking about a tape. Have you heard about this videotape that kills you when you watch it? If you watch it, you will get a phone call and the girl who calls will tell you that you will die within seven days. Katie claims her and her boyfriend saw that tape one week ago from tonight. She then fakes her own death to scare Becca. <laughs> God, Katie. Okay. Oh, Katie. Oh, oh, oh. Katie gets a phone call from her mom, and as she puts an end to the conversation, the TV goes off all by itself. Bye, mom. Katie shuts the TV off, but it keeps turning itself back on. She thinks Becca is playing her another trick, so she goes upstairs and calls Becca's name. Becca doesn't answer, and there's water everywhere. She goes into her own room and dies. <laughs> Next we get introduced to Rachel. She's a reporter. Oh, shit. Hey. And her son Aiden. You can already tell that that's one fucked up kid. That's some fucking Damien shit right there. We find out that Aiden and Katie are cousins. Aiden's teacher claims that Aiden were drawing pictures of Katie's death one week before he, she died. You say she died three nights ago. Yeah, that's right. 
Aiden drew these last week. Rachel brushes it off as it would be just nothing. Have a chance to stop a death, not doing anything. Good job, teacher, good job. Rachel and Aiden gets ready to go to Katie's funeral. Her mom and dad are devastated. You alright, Dave? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? But the mom, which I guess is Rachel's sister, still asks Rachel to look into Katie's death since having a heart attack at that young of an age is not very common. She also claims that she saw her daughter's face. I saw her face. <laughs> Rachel starts to snoop around and finds out about a tape from a couple of Katie's friends. It's not about that. It's about the tape. What tape? The one that kills you when you watch it. Oh, please. Rachel decides to look into the case and take some photos that belong to Katie. One of the pictures shows Katie and her friends with distorted faces. Rachel goes to the same cabin as the youngsters rented in the, in the pictures. Cabin 12 at Shelter Mountain Inn. The owner of the place tips her off that uh, the TV reception is really bad. Reception's never good here. That's why we bought tape players for videos. Rachel sees a tape without a case. She gets curious about it and takes it. And of course she watches it and it is the creepiest shit I've ever seen. I want to relax, but I can't. That is some nasty shit, what the hell? I'm, I'm freaking out. After she's done watching it, the telephone rings. She picks it up, and on the other end, there's a girl whispering. Seven days. <laughs> Rachel freaks the fuck out and runs out of the cabin. Rachel comes home and does not know what to believe anymore. She calls up an old friend, Noah. She shows him the pictures of Katie and her friends, especially the one with the distorted faces. Pretty cool effect. Then he tells him to take a picture of her with a camera. Her face becomes distorted on every picture. Noah is a skeptic, but he still watches the tape. But he calls it a hoax, a student film. The phone rings, but Rachel does not answer. After Noah leaves, still not convinced of what can, could happen if you watch the tape, Rachel sees a message on her answering machine. Again, she freaks out and deletes it. But uh, we, we never get to hear it, but we, I guess we can guess what, what the message is. I want tacos. Rachel goes to her work where they have uh, really good equipment for video analysis. She looks at the video again, frame by frame. She notices that the tape doesn't have any numbers to show where on the tape the recordings exist. It's all scrambled and it's, it's really weird. She takes the tape to Noah for closer inspection. Okay, when you record a tape, the makeup of the tracks is like a signature for whatever did the recording, like a camcorder, VCR, whatever. So the control track could tell us where it came from. But to not have one, I mean, that's like being born without fingerprints. They search the video again and find something just out of frame. They almost get it, but Rachel gets a little bit too excited and just ruins the whole thing. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it won't go okay, any keep further. going. No, go no, 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 let me wait, do wait, it. Wait, Come it on. Won't go any further. Get the let me do shit. it. Then Noah's girlfriend comes home. We notice that there's some tension between Noah and Rachel. Rachel gets a little bit upset and leaves. On her way, she walks directly under a ladder and she realizes, is this the ladder that was from the tape? Rachel decides to seek out Becca, Katie's friend, who went totally mental after, well, Katie's death. Becca doesn't hardly respond to any of Rachel's attempts to talk to her, 
but she does deliver a message. She'll show you. Who? Who will show me? Not now. Four days. Rachel finds another place with even more hardcore tech to try to find out what was that thing that was just beyond the the frame. <laughs> After doing loads of research at the local library, she eventually finds out that the lighthouse is located at Moesco Island. There lived once upon a time the family Morgan. She finds out a lot about a person named Anna Morgan that lived on that island. She was a horse breather and enthusiast. The horses on her farm got really sick and died while well, they drowned themselves somehow. And this led to Anna taking her own life. Rachel then talks to her sister about taking care of Aiden for a couple of days, while she goes to the island. But mid-conversation she starts to cough really, like a lot, and she starts to pull something out of her mouth. It looks like hair. No, that's something completely else, I don't know, I don't even know what that is. She freaks out yet again, she should freak out at that particular moment, and she goes to find her son, Aiden. But Aiden isn't in his room, instead there sits a girl in the middle of the room with hair in front of her face. <laughs> it was only a dream and she wake, woke up from it totally safe. But wait, there's still a bruise on her arm? She goes to find Aiden again, and this time, she finds him watching the tape. No! This time Rachel freaks the fuck out yet one more time, and I guess she should, should freak out at this point of time. She turns off the TV and starts yelling at the telephone as it starts ringing. But not to worry, it's only Noah calling to tell her that he finally believes her story. Earlier that day he saw his own face distorted in a TV monitor while, while he was buying, I think it was cigarettes or something like that. And she tells Noah that their son has watched the tape. He watched the tape. Who, who watched the tape? Our son. Noah takes Rachel and Aiden to Katie's parents so that they can look after Aiden while Rachel goes to the island. Rachel tells Noah that while she is on the island he has an important job to do. He must find out more about Anna Morgan. So he finds out about a psychiatric ward where she was held for a time and tries to find out more about her there. He gets shut down by the people that works there because he's not a relative but you know what he doesn't give a fuck and he breaks in anyway. On the ferret is a whole conundrum where a horse just goes ballistic and crazy when uh, Rachel just walks up to, to, to the horse wagon. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry, dark humor, sorry. I heard of. This is terrible, I, I'm sorry, this is terrible. Okay, okay, okay. I feel bad for laughing right now. I feel really bad for laughing. That is... That's some dark shit right there. Rachel finally comes to the island and finds the Morgan farm. There she recognizes two things from the tape. A window and a mirror. She also meets a guy called Richard Morgan. She asks him about Anna and their daughter, which she somehow found out on on the boat ride over. Daughter. Apparently we do not read all the material before we go off on a crazy adventure. He's not mean to her, but he's really avoidive about the question that she asks of him. And when he sees that she has the tape, he kicks her out. Where's your daughter? Maybe she could help. I don't have a daughter. Meanwhile, at the psychiatric ward, Noah finds out that Anna Morgan has a, had a total of 66 child attempts and 66 miscarriages. Which means that there shouldn't be a, a kid alive. He also finds a lead about another tape. Well, Richard Morgan does not want to talk to Rachel, so she goes to find a neighbor. The neighbor tells Rachel that, indeed, the Morgans did have a daughter. One adopted daughter named Samara. 
she also mentions that when Anna was uh, still alive, she claimed to have visions uh, that were somehow connected to Samara. Visions of insanity. Meanwhile, yet again, Noah finds out where the tape is held. He goes there, but only to realize that the last person that, well, rented or, you know, I don't know, took the movie from the place were Richard Morgan himself. Okay, now, man. Does it say who, who was the last person who watched it? Noah hurries up to take the next ferry ride to the island. Rachel goes back to the farm to confront Richard Morgan again. She finds that the door is open. Mr. Morgan? She goes inside and you know what? She finds the tape that Noah was looking for at the, you know, psychiatric ward place. The tape is about Samara and her time at a, a mental institution where doctors are trying to find out why Samara never sleeps. They just want to help you. Not daddy. Your daddy loves you. Daddy loves the horses. He wants me to go away. He goes into a frenzy and hits her in the face. <laughs> He takes the TV and the tape and he just goes upstairs. Rachel tries to follow him up the stairs and sees that he's going to kill himself in a water-filled bathtub with a lot of electricity going through cords. She tries to stop him but she fails and he, well, he takes his own life. Rachel screams for him to stop, but it is too late. But luckily, Noah teleported to the island and grabs her and tells her, It's too late. He's dead. Seriously, no one's that fast. He was, like, way over in another place and no one's, no one's that fast. Then Rachel realizes something that she heard before. She doesn't like the barn. What? The horses keep her awake. They both go to the barn where they find a ladder, the same ladder from the movie. They climb the ladder and find a loft where there's a little room where it looks like Samara lived as a, as a child. He kept her here. Noah sees something strange on the wallpaper and starts to remove it from the wall. They rip it up and see a, a, an image of a, of a tree burnt into the wood. I've seen this tree before. Yeah, it was on the tape. No. I've been there. Shelter Mountain. They go back to the cabin 12 and the seven days are almost up. Rachel gives up but Noah just goes nuts and crazy and tells her that you, you can't give up, we have to continue. While Noah is going off in a frenzy, they are in luck because they find a, a strange round circle burnt into the, the floor or something. I don't know, it's a circle on the floor anyway. With almost no time left, Noah takes an axe and breaks through the floorboards. <laughs> Underneath the floor is a well. A well under the cabin. They both go down in the hole and start to remove the stone lid that has been put over uh, the well. But something strange starts to happen with the cabin. Screws are starting to loosen and floorboards are creaking and there's a lot of conundrum going on. Rachel gets hit by a TV and falls right down into the well. <laughs> <laughs> Dude! Rachel! Sorry, dark humor. <laughs> Noah tries to save her, but it, it's a really, really deep well, and he doesn't even see her down there. Meanwhile, Rachel finds Samara's body, and she realizes through a vision that Samara drowned in this well. In her mind, she sees images of Anna Morgan 
strangling, choking Samara, and then pushes Samara down the well. Samara didn't die right away. It took seven days for her to die in that well. Eventually, Rachel gets saved out of the well, and everything seems fine. Samara is finally at rest, and Rachel and Noah heads back home. We're gonna bury her next week. It's over. They both go to pick up Aiden, and finally it somehow feels like there's a family connection in between the three of them. Noah says goodbye to Rachel and goes back to his place, and Rachel goes to bed. Aiden wakes up the day after and finds that Rachel has been sleeping next to him. He asks if everything is alright and if Samara is still in the dark place. Rachel responds with, no, we set her free. You helped her? Yeah. Why did you do that? What's wrong, honey? You weren't supposed to help her. It's okay now. She's not gonna hurt you. She... Don't you understand, Rachel? She never sleeps. Noah is shilling back in his crib when the TV turns on by itself. He goes and shuts it off. But it still keeps on popping up a picture, a picture of a well. He realizes what is about to happen and tries to get away, but Samara starts crawling out of the TV. Rachel races over to try to, to save Noah, but it's too late. Noah is dead. And for some reason, Rachel and Aiden survived. I didn't really get why. Was it because she made a copy of the tape, or they watched the copy of the tape, or uh, or that they watched the, the copy of the tape one more time? I, I, I don't really get it. It was really fuzzy in the end, but somehow they survived. I think it was because they wanted the characters to move on to, to make another movie, The Ring 2. So, uh, what did I think about the movie? Well, I liked it. I liked the movie. It was scary. I got scared a couple of times. Um, but I think the freakiest part of it was the, the tape itself. And I think my expectations of the movie was set way too high. Uh, I thought I would be more scared than I actually was. It was more of a long story and not really that amount of jump scares and scares that I really wanted in the movie. I still think that the movie has aged very well. It came out in 2002, today is 2013, we are soon entering 2014. I also didn't get why why the island was one place and the the cabin place was... Why, why did she... Why did Anna Morgan kill Samara at the cabin place while she could just have drowned her in the ocean? Uh, or I don't know. I, I I I I don't know why I didn't get that part, but uh, I didn't really draw the connection in between those places. But otherwise, I think the movie was great. There could have been a, a, some more scares, but uh, overall, I think it still holds up uh, as a horror movie uh, to still today. But maybe they should think of remaking the movie eventually. Not not like not this year, but you know like. 2020 maybe they should look into it again and try to make it you know even more scarier and even more horrifying well that's all for me for today i hope you really enjoyed this review and that i will see you next time uh, if you like this leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me to do more uh, this is actually gonna take me uh, much longer than making an ordinary video so i kind of want to know if you if you want to see me more do more of this i will make these kind of videos well maybe once a month or every two weeks or something like that um so anyway i'll see you guys next time in whatever i'm putting out there you guys you stay awesome as usual i'll see you next time captain out mm -hmm.